Hello, ladies and gentlemen from all over the world. Welcome to um, the Swinging 60s London Celebrity Spotlight. My name is Paul Endicott, and um, I am here in London, live, central London, or just outside central London, actually. Um, seven o'clock or just after. Sorry about the, uh, the late um, uh, switch on. It's meant to be seven o'clock. Uh, had a couple of technical problems on going live. I can see some of the links are coming in, some of the comments are coming in already, which I'll be putting on to our celebrity guest today. A little bit about what we've been doing in the last week and what's been happening around London. Uh, it's week two of our lockdown in London. We uh, started last week. Um, it's month nine of the coronavirus. Um, and, you know, there's good news and bad news this week. The good news is that Pfizer has apparently come up with a vaccine for this. The bad news is that in the UK, we've hit 50,000 deaths this week, 50,000 deaths from the virus. That's the bad news. Um, today, we have our celebrity guest on, coming on soon, Lem Lubin from Unit 4 Plus 2. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of insights. Again, as you may know, people aren't traveling about. The London tourism industry has been absolutely devastated. And one of the reasons why I started doing these celebrity spotlights is to bring the community together, the international, the global music community uh, of the 60s, which transcended into the 70s. Um, there's, there's live tours that we're putting on, live online tours. Um, there's the birth of the Rolling Stones, there's the, the Beatles in West London, and there's the swinging 60s experience. These are experiences online, which you can get, uh, via Zoom. So you can be in the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world. And we take you on a journey, a live journey down the King's Road, the beating heart of Swinging 60s London. We even go into some of the legendary music venues like the Troubadour, etc. So that's a little bit about the tours that we put on. And as I say, this is the second of our celebrity spotlights. And I'm really, really uh, excited to, uh, to bring you Lem Lubin from Unit 4 Plus 2. Let's bring him into the party. Hello, Lem. Oh, hello. There you are. There we are. Oh, you said it's become very big. I've become very big. Oh. You're yes, very you. big. You're very big. You have to be big. <laughs> so, um, with, well, blimey, where do we start? Hampton Court is probably a good place to start. Oh, my you birthday. Know, in Hampton Court. <laughs> Shall I tell them what year? You're a baby. Oh, why not? 1944. Hampton Court. At what stage did you move out of Hampton Court? Um, virtually immediately at the end of the war, so we were sent up to um, Blackpool. So I spent the first five years in my life in Blackpool. Now you can't put bike on book, it's stuff like that. You must have gone to elocution lessons. No, I just kept it up. And then we came back, we came back to London and um, I spent most of my growing up years in, in Lower Clapton. And then um, after that we moved around Woodford Bridge, London, the lot, Lancaster Gate. Fantastic. I, yeah, I picked it up there, I guess. So, um, so the London scene I mean, when you went up to, to the north, at what stage did you get involved with music? What was your inspiration of getting involved with music? What what was the tipping point? Um, Buddy Holly, actually. Listening to Buddy Holly. And uh, we played a small group at school. And we played at school for a while. And um, I guess that, that was it. I mean, also the youth club that I belong to in Clapton, we used to play out there. Well, actually, in fact, Helen Shapiro, who was 
It was only like 14 at the time, we were, we were 15 or 14. But it was very hot. We got me up on the, on the road. You know, it's amazing. I was, I was talking to um, Mick Avery last week and a very good friend of mine, Mike Berry, and the inspiration for you guys were, a lot of them were the Americans. Uh, you know, the late 50s, the um, the Buddy Hollies, and also the blues, you know, the blues yeah. coming over big time. We're getting some really um, amazing who, who's coming online here at the moment, uh, Len. Oh. Um, I'm just going to have to go back, but we've got... Um, Liverpool, Pennsylvania, uh, Ohio, America, Cape Town, um, South Africa again. Uh, they're coming from London, uh, Australia. Blimey, it's 6.15 a.m. in Australia. Well done, you. Hello <laughs> from Norway. Hello from Kansas, uh, Kansas, KY. Where's KY? I only know KY is Jimmy's, but Kentucky. don't tell me about that. Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. South Africa, Belfast, so Glasgow. I'm looking for a couple of questions I can um, hit you with if anyone's got any questions. I'm just having a look here. Peru, hello from Peru. Um, wow, Austria, Turkey, that's fantastic. Brooklyn, so I haven't got any questions at the moment for you. So what I'm gonna be doing, and I think it's a good time to actually um play it a bit of music because those that don't know lem lubin will know of unit four plus two and if they haven't heard of unit four plus two then they would have heard of concrete and clay so i think <laughs> it's worth now um reminding those people about what um unit four plus two it was really their their figurehead as far as music is concerned it got to number one in 1965 um it hit the top 20 although there were two singers yeah. uh, that that released it in america and the billboards in america um uh god i'm trying to think of his name now um eddie rambo yeah i think he got to number 35 in america with it and unit four plus two actually got to 28 in the yeah. books with it yeah so let's remind ourselves about this iconic song which is um here we go let's have a look uh, sad. <laughs> this is where it gets uh quite difficult, quite difficult. So there we go. <laughs> that I think that was a blast from the past for you. It so certainly was, yeah. Tell 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 me your recollections. What was the lead up to that? You joined Unit Four Plus Two in nineteen sixty four. How did that come about? 
Well, I was um, I was doing Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan impressions at this pub in Walthamstow, the Bell, and um, there was a group there called the Clouds, and I used to join in with them. And then one night, this guy came in and said, um, "I represent this band, and I'd like you to come along for an audition." And um, his name was John Barker, John L. Barker. And so I went along. I like the guys, and they, they quite like me. And then within four days, we were playing at the uh, assembly rooms in Wigan. So, and that was the beginning. And we, we had a little chat before about how the band was formed. There was it was a harmony band. It was a vocal harmony band of four people. Yeah. Um, I think it was um, Brian Parker who was the the lead. He was the guy that started the band in sixty two or sixty three. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, as the name suggests, it was four plus two that came in well, for the, the the backing for the. Uh, I actually replaced Brian. Brian was fed up with it all. He couldn't want to play anymore, so I actually replaced him. And we did the first few gigs just as virtually almost as a folk group. And um, then we got a drummer and a bass player who joined the band, who were the plus two. And okay. Clay, Tom Clay came about because he wrote the song, Tommy Mole and Brian wrote the song, which we played at a, at a party, at, at sort of in the evening to our mates. And they went, oh, that's nice, just to do that. And so we went into the Georgia Sound studio and recorded it. But also with Russ Ballard and Bob Henry on the, on the record as well. And that was in 65, 60, yeah, 65, April, it was a hit in April. Right, okay. Um, Russ Ballard did a lot on the recording, but he didn't yeah. play yeah um publicly with the band no not until the end the last yeah. about the last year of the, of the group for the band right to join and actually the, that, it's a good band though. it's like a rock and roll band because they were such good players and uh but then it petered out and i left and other people joined okay I don't know what, I don't know who. aha i've Red got got some comments coming through here i noticed um we have we have people from bangalore in india it's amazing oh, really? yeah. the question here met these guys in person tommy mola lead singer do you know lynn marsh hill hello lynn linda hello linda where are you from linda um <laughs> uh, uh we have, we've got I'm just seeing if there are any questions, actually, uh, as in your delay sound is coming through. Oh, from your guest, it's hard to hear what he's saying. Um, maybe you could turn the volume up a bit there, Lem, if you can. Uh, I don't think it goes up very far. Okay, well let's 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 crack on. We'll just have to. That's it. Hundred percent. Visitors will have to turn the volume up a little bit more. But this is uh, Linda again. Me and my sister went to their dressing room before the show at the Gre uh, Grebro Club in Rotherham. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember that? No. <laughs> oh no <laughs> we have some more here deborah hi from reno nevada hi Reno. not volume no we're getting <laughs> feedback okay well with the earpieces um there's not a lot we can do to the volume at the moment where no. we're hearing that there's some some problem with the the volume but we'll just have to stick with it because uh, Cheap apple stuff. yeah there seems to be a big lag in vocal transmission not volume well there's um little we can do but we will crack on 
Um, right. Next. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do, uh, Lem, is, I mean, Concrete and Clay is such an iconic song, and it has been covered, and I, I've done a little bit of research before you came on, and I've seen the vast amount of people who have <laughs> covered Concrete and Clay, and they're immense, but the the wonderful thing that I've noticed is how many younger people have covered it. And one of the, the things that is dear to my heart with regard to what we're doing here at Music Heritage London and the Swinging 60s experience is making sure that the next generation are, um, are aware of the, you know, the legacy, basically, the legacy angle. The sustainability of what we're doing is not in the baby boomers, but in the future generations. And I just wanted to show you, and I think it may be, this is like jukebox jewelry, this is like hit or miss. Um, maybe <laughs> we'll look at some of the covers, we won't show them all, but we'll look at some of the covers from across the world, young and old, and, uh, and we'll give it a bit of a thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> so here we go. Let's look at this. Is from Hong, the Hong Kong Syndicate. So let's share my screen a minute. Let's see if we can get this one up. Uh, let's have a look at this. Here we go. Well, there we go. That's, uh, that's the question. Have you heard that one before? No. <laughs> um, what do we give it out of ten? It's um, it's it's it's. Oh, I'll give that five. <laughs> give it five. Give it five. <laughs> You've got to put the accents on as well. I'll give it five. We've got a few others I'd like to um, show you, but that I, I will I will come through some of them here that that. Um, uh, here we go, Ron Sings. Let me share the screen again. Now, let me have a look at this one. I think that um, 
that shows well, the youth. I mean, how young he was, probably 16, yeah. 17. Yeah, probably even younger. Also changing the rhythm slightly, which is quite yeah. interesting. But you know, there's, there's, there's something really nice about um, the contemporary musicians now. One of the things I, I put on live music, as you may know, at the old station hotel, um, and it's okay putting tribute bands on, playing the the hits of yesteryear. But what I'm trying to do is is introduce more contemporary musicians, younger musicians, on the basis that they put their own interpretation to classic mm. these numbers. And I think that shows a, a kind of creativity in that young lad there. Um, put it changing the beat. It's really nice that you, you see a lot of that now in some celebrity shows or or tribute shows on television where they are, are putting their own interpretation to classic 60s numbers. Yeah. And in some cases, they sound better than the original as far yeah. as creativity. Um, so recollections, Len. Um, very quickly after you joined <laughs> my love my love your sister new headphones my, my love your sister your assistant where is she where is she come in come and say hello come and say hello come on. Uh, hello. i'm not i'm not I've got no makeup. while i do this i've got no makeup on oh no i know <laughs> you don't know <laughs> Oh no, this, this is different. Can't use it. Can't use it. Okay. Uh, too modern. Far too modern. I'll use it over. Okay. Sorry about this. That's okay. There we are. It's got the right end of it. Can you hear us now? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting some comments in. The original version is the best, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> In fact, Linda is actually still love the original from Unit Four Plus Two. Let's see actually, if we can find some others. Actually, I love what I love with the Eddie Rambo version. The Eddie Rambo version was fabulous. Very smooth. And... Ah, he's really nice. Thank you. I, I like. What's your German like? Is it German? It looks like Swedish. Swedish. Here we go. <laughs> just crack on. <laughs> it's great just to be here, says uh, Gidget. Gidget. A talking dog. So, uh, so we're cracking on. <laughs> uh, so I think I think the thumbs up for the original, but we haven't. We've come. We've got a few more to listen to. Um, we have some more here coming from. Well, we we actually come on to those in a minute. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about you, Lem, and what what you um, what happened. How long were you with Unit Four Plus Two, and what happened after you left? Um. I was living in the club till um, 69 and the whole thing was beginning to, beginning to fall apart so I left and I joined um, Island Music and um, which I really enjoyed because then I started getting 50 feet and I wanted to be back on the road so um, I joined Tristan and uh, had a couple of years with them, which was great fun, and we went all over the world, which we never went with Unit 4. The only place we ever went was um, not in Belgium. I mean, it was number one virtually all over the world except America, and we went to not for the song festival. So, did you miss, so, so you kind of missed out on the British invasion years. 64 yeah. was when... It started. Absolutely. I mean, the, our, our manager was a, not a not a not a good manager, to put it politely. And uh, you know, his, his advice was ridiculous. And uh, actually, 
even before our record came out, he had gone to business with a guy called Alan Klein from America, who was also a crook. And they released the Eddie Rambo curtain before ours. So it came out about a week before ours came out, which was totally illegal. And um, that divided the sales. But as you said, we, we beat him. But, um, but, but, you know, I went to Ireland music, and I, I, loved, I loved Ireland, but I started getting itchy feet. It's once you've been on the road and you, you want to go back again. And so, Chris, uh, and that was great fun. Great fun. But this was after uh, Yellow River had come out. So Yellow River was a hit in 1970, I think. Number yeah. one in 1970. Yeah, I think seventy-one, seventy-two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Christie had gone from not really well known up to a, you know, obviously having a number one hit. People are starting to pay attention. Yeah, yeah. And actually, uh, I mean, the couple I was on with Christie was um, Alan Hill, which was getting towards the end of her career. <laughs> I think at the end of that career as well, it says something about me, I suppose. But uh, I was also playing based on that. And then... Um, Lem, do you, do you have a microphone on your computer at all? Yeah. I don't know that's working or not. Can you, can you hear this? Carry on talking. But you can't hear that. Um, the microphone doesn't work. I can hear the... I'm just because we're getting a lot of feedback. I'm getting yeah, some. Yeah, yeah. I can't hear a word, so. I can't understand why. I mean, is this supposed to work, isn't it? It was okay. stuck up before, wasn't it? Yeah, it's. It's, it's, it's getting worse. Could be maybe his mouth too close, I don't know. Um, but it's just we're just getting some comments about feedback, can't yeah. hear a word and things. So, which uh, so apologise for that, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Um, let's go into a couple of other covers. Um, again, it's some of these are fantastic. Um, I'm going to uh, share my screen now and show you some other cover versions of this, um, which kind of blew me away when I was looking at them. Mm. Okay. Let's have a look at this one. Our sweet as roses in the morning, and you to me. Our soft as summer rain at dawn, and love we share. That something else in the sidewalks and the streets, the concrete and the clay beneath my feet begins to crumble. But love will never die. You know we see the mountains tumble. And before we say goodbye, we're loving right in love eternally. And that's the way the way it's meant to be now. Oh, around. I see the purple shades of evening and on the ground. The shadows fall, but once again I'm in the arms. So tenderly, in the sidewalks and the streets, the concrete and the clay. Make my feet begins to crumble, but love will never die. In the wind, see the mountains tumble. And before we say goodbye, my love and I will bring you in love to the wind. Well, that is, um... <laughs> that's just <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it's uh, it 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 gets even <laughs> raunchier later on. So I thought sparing any uh, blushes, I thought mm. I'd. Uh, I'd, I'd... <laughs> I put that one on the on the back burner. But <laughs> have you seen that one before? No, no. Excellent. 
<laughs> very creative, very head head in it. Imagine playing that in Ibiza. You know, you can imagine yeah. playing the the Coup Club in Ibiza. <laughs> Um, oh so, so you were with um, Christy after a spell with a band called Satisfaction? No, that was before. And then um, that was the Mike Cotton, I joined the Mike Cotton band after Christy. Okay. And um, that became Satisfaction. Also, we were Dantelian's chariot with Zoot Money. So that's it, that's a second. Everywhere we went, they were expecting the big roll down. And um, Suze had just come back from um, America, full of God and whatever. And that's why we see Dan Parian say it. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, okay. Yeah, and um, so everywhere we played, we died. So we were taxing. It's quite funny. I love it. I love it. And um, we, we carried on the satisfaction. Okay. And what happened after that? Obviously, you did you leave the music business after? Um... Well, after that, I joined CBS as an A&R man. And I um, had quite a bit of success there. I, 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 I found the class and uh, a couple of other bands but then i got a, an offer from rocket records Elton company to um to go there as head of r, &R at a, a, a big salary so i went and um while we were there i, I did um lulu produce a record with lulu and, and, and judy Zook, and um then we went to Moscow, went to Russia with that in 79. And while we were there, there were sort of three nights in, in, in Moscow and St. St. Petersburg. And so the sound man used the sound from one concert, partly on another concert, just to, you know, to get the best shots and the best sound. And I had to help him because I knew all the records, I knew all the sounds, what it should be. So then I went to America to uh, help him do the editing of the sound, and I just stayed there. So I left, left it. Actually, it's quite funny because um, I was in Studio 54 one day, and John Reed was there, and he said, uh, I haven't seen you around records. I said, I left. I left the year ago. He said, oh, I thought I hadn't seen you. <laughs> so that's how much he missed me. Well, so many people do miss you. I mean, I was chatting to a couple of, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call them legends as such, or as Mike Berry calls them, legends. <laughs> but um, we, uh, I was talking to um, Tony Bramwell, who was a lifelong friend of the Beatles. He started as their road manager or well, he basically did everything for the Beatles. He yeah. was an altered friend with the Beatles, as you know, John Paul George um, and met Ringo later, but he, he knew them from teenagers, teenage years. So he was, um, I was chatting to him the other day and or texting him and he said, please pass on my best to Lem. And only yesterday I was talking with Derek Griffiths, Del, Del Boy, uh, from the art woods ronnie woods older brothers man and uh and i mentioned that you know you're on the celebrity spotlight today and he said please send lem my my love and best wishes oh was he really yeah and also we go back to about 1964 65 when he was going out with uh, who is this girl, <laughs> who is now Bob Hendrick's wife, and, and uh, she was living at the time with this girl called Wendy, who I, who I married. And so he was my best man. So we got back a long way. So there's a lot of that going. Was that that, that absolutely? But um, you know, the I'm just seeing if I can get your 
microphone a little bit better. Talking into that microphone may be the problem. Um, <laughs> you don't have another microphone. I've got this one. That could be. That sounds better to me already. Got, what, this one. Yeah. No. There's something wrong. I've got to get the system sorted. Okay. Well, let's let's crack on. Yeah. We've got about ten minutes left. Sorry though. about that. Yeah. Um, I, I do apologise, ladies and gents, for yeah. the sound quality. We are getting, you know, comments about feedback. Yeah. Take the headphones off, Lem. See if it works without them. Yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, apologies for all this. Laura Leanne has said, uh, Paul Endicott, repeat back what he says. <laughs> I can't understand anything. You shouldn't have hit that wine, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> You, you don't drink the whiskey before you listen to a show but uh, anyway we um, let, let, i've got a couple of other clips i wanted to show you um because these are uh, so a couple of other young people here playing so let's let's have a look see at some of these um we have uh share screen let's have a look here now, have you heard concrete and clay on a ukulele? never heard it on a ukulele before <laughs> he was cheating a bit because he had some backing tracks but i thought that was quite original i mean ukuleles became a bit of a, a fashionable commodity in the last few years easy to carry well, around with you when i'm cleaning windows yeah 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 Formby. was it <laughs> was it george Formby? George Formby, yeah. um brilliant I, I you know whatever <laughs> instrument they they play things on and let's face it, you know, picking up an instrument and going back to why music was so important in the 60s was all about uh, the kids of the day trying to make a name for themselves. They wanted to express themselves and they had a little bit more money in their pocket uh, after the post-war austerity. Um, they were rebuilding the UK, re rebuilding London. Um, they didn't want to listen to their parents' music anymore. Uh, they wanted to express themselves, you know, as well as I do. I mean, I, mm. I had a pound for every time I heard my parents say to me, you know, you should be, should be seen and not heard uh, or, or, or shut up until you're spoken to. And you're thinking, no, I want to say something. I want <laughs> so Music actually gave people the ability to express themselves and no better way to do it, especially if you weren't that talented in music, is skiffle music. And Skiffle and the Lonnie Donigans, yeah. um, you know, in 1954 when he recorded Rock Island Line was the tipping point for rock and roll at the end of the day. The Two Eyes Club, etc. So did you get involved with any Skiffle or were you a little bit later than that? No, I was later. But I, I, I like Lonnie Donigan and I like his songs because they're amusing. But uh, no, not really. I never had the boom candle for the string but um I used to listen to it like with Skiffle and Folk both were sort of quite formative yeah there's somebody you may know <laughs> looking good Lem hope you're keeping well old pal <laughs> thank you Ray there we go love to get you back then uh, <laughs> We're still getting some people in, um, you know, hi from Seattle. 
Um, hello from Hamburg. Now there's a place. Oh my word! Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh hello. <laughs> Hamburg was obviously you know a melting pot then. Yeah. Uh, in uh, 62. 62 was kind of the year um, for for um, for the Beatles. And again, the Beatles were a skiffle band. Yeah. Um, Oh, Rod, good old Rod Davis. Do you know Rod Davis from the Quarry Men? Rod no. Davis, one of the founder members of the Quarry Men, with I, John. I know the man. Um, but he, um, you know, he's been on the, the tours, etc. And he he remembers with passion the, the the time that he was with the Quarry Men, and and that's how the Beatles started. Yeah. So, um, what are you up to now, Len? No, I'm just well. I mean, obviously with the um, coronavirus i've been stuck here for the last eight months or whatever it is and i've hardly been up to london at all so really just hanging around here and fortunately there's been very very little um virus infections certainly around our, our village so that's been good but i'm just going out walking and you no know, walking with my dog is here on the floor um and just basically play my guitar a bit and that's it. Any any plans for the future with regard to what you're going to be doing? Obviously, every musician I've spoken to, I did go to the Cabbage Patch a um, couple of weeks ago before lockdown to see Tim Hain and um, and Robin Bibby um, playing uh, as a duo. Fantastic yeah. blues. It was a kind of peter green tribute to a certain extent um but again that's now gone so there's mm. very few there's loads of musicians sitting there um some are writing stuff are you writing that were you ever into writing i was i've had a, you know i wrote quite a few of the songs to come back to but uh never had any real success um i had one single with, with Malcolm, which got loads of plays but that didn't make it either. So I don't write. I don't write. Ah, Ryan Reigns. Well, then, we are. Um, we're still. Uh, we're still getting um, fantastic yeah. traction here. Well, um, I'm just trying to see if there's any anyone's got got some. Uh, we've we've looked at that one. Are there any questions for? Lem, uh, before we we end this, there's a Elizabeth there, one of our our. Uh, but she's saying hello to Laura. I mean, <laughs> do you want to say hello to Lem? No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't she look like John Lennon? <laughs> she does look spitting image. Hey, Lem Lubin, <laughs> see you for a drink after lockdown in Pusey. Gosh, you are you are part of the same. Can't believe we live in the same village. I look forward to it too, Laura. Excellent. Yeah. So um, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Lem, for joining us. This is our second out of you know. I'm hope hopefully we're going to be doing a lot more of these. Sorry that the sound wasn't yeah. fantastic to everyone that's tuned in. We've still got um, you know quite a few people listening, which is great. We've been live now. Oh, no, we've got, we started late, so we're still on um, 44 minutes. Yeah. Um, we um, we must try and get the sound sorted out. So yeah. I apologize to yeah, anyone out there who has um, had a, a problem listening. Um, I'm seeing if there are any questions. Hello, Ray. I don't know who Ray is. Um, obviously, somebody that's, had a couple of more drinks than, than <laughs> we've got a couple more uh, we've, we've got a well, couple more here no I'm, I'm, my glass is just emptied unfortunately my whiskey is gone now I wanted to play this um, which is the second hit uh, by unit 4 plus 2 um, so you may be able to listen to this and tell us all about this second hit here And now it's ready for someone like David Michael from the Unit 4 Plus 2 group to try out in rehearsal at London's Ad Lib Club. Never been. 
Now, tell me more about that. That sounded like a little bit more vocal. There was more harmonies going on there. Yeah, that was, that was more what, the kind of thing that we used to do on stage. Um, but I don't think that should have been our second record. We did another one called, um, uh, what was it called? I can't even remember now. That should have been the follow-up. But uh, Amanda said, no, no, you've got to do something completely different just to show how rounded you are. So that came out. Although it's a lovely song. It is. Um, it got into the top uh, top 20 yeah. in the UK. I don't know how it did in America, but Nothing. it was a top 20 hit. And, um, this was an album. and they, they rushed an album through, didn't they? This was all on Decca, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. But then you went on to Fontana, Fontana. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here we've got some more comments coming in through. I don't know where... Oh, this is um, Gijit again. Thank you for the memory lane. It's wonderful. <laughs> uh, so, you know, great to hear. I mean, it must be really early in Australia. I'm sorry to wake you up, guys, in Australia. <laughs> Um, but it's really good that you're joining us here, live in London. Um, where we've got another one from Ray here. Awful guitars, those TR2s, Len. <laughs> who, who, who was that drummer in the vid, mate? That was um, <laughs> that was Hugh Halliday. Yeah. Little Hugh Halliday. Excellent, excellent. So, <laughs> should we listen to one more cover? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm loving this. The covers are great, aren't they? Let's, yeah. let's see what we can see on the covers. Okay. Young person again. To me, as sweet as roses in the morning. To me, as soft as summer in the dawn of the shed. That summer day, the sidewalks in the streets, the concrete and the clay. Give me my faith, it begins to crumble. Love will never die, because we'll see the mountains stumble. Well, that only goes to show that, you know, the youngsters are really engaging with this music. Yeah. I was having a conversation with my 15 year old who's in, he's into the 60s stuff as well, but he's been playing a lot of rap music. And I said, Rap won't be around in 10 years' time, let alone you know, five years' yeah. time. We're listening to music, and don't get me wrong, he started playing the guitar 18 months ago, and he's now playing loads of small faces. That's the first song he learned, was a, and performed in front of 200 people within a couple of months mm -hmm. of him learning. Um, but it's the longevity, it's the fact that the legacy of the 60s music will transcend generations. It will still be listened to. And there is no doubt, Len, that, that you were part of a band 
that will be remembered and listened to for many, many decades, if not centuries to come, because there is no doubt in my mind that the 60s music um, was inspirational. Um, the production, when you've got the likes of Joe Meek producing yeah. records who, you know, do it yourself, you know, music production. Telstar yeah. will go down as one of the greats. Yeah, they do so. The stories yeah. we hear from Clem Catini, you know, one of the top yeah. session musicians. And, um, you know, he used to go up and knock the, the toilet seat upstairs and get the <laughs> recording out of it and put it all together. This was this was before the, the you know, the, the digital age. This was mm. analog. This was old fashioned stuff, yeah. spitting it about. Music today I see as being very overproduced. What's your take on music now, contemporary music? Well, the whole thing about our music was that first it was on an eight track, and then it, went, it, it became really modern and it was 16 track, and then 32. But it was always on tape, and you could jump from one track to another and build up that way. With digital, it was also clean. And so you have to add any ambience that you need to each track. And it's not quite the same as, as the old method. Yeah. And I think quite a few people are actually going back to the old methods. They're going back to the old ways. Absolutely. There was something really nice about the guitar maybe being slightly out of tune or or or, or, or there being a um, a click on the, on on the tape, you know. Yeah. It added to it. Um, yeah. I can't think of any at the moment. Um, uh, oh God. Um, just the two of us, for example. If you listen to it, there's lots of imperfections. Mm. Um, loads of tracks from the '60s had those imperfections, which are part of the richness of yeah. the music of the day, as you would listen to when it was live. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm lucky enough to to play a bit of music. I've I've done a bit in the past, and it's just people's enjoyment. People get a kick out of it. They don't want perfection. Yeah. They're not after yeah. perfection. And I think a lot of producers have got it wrong in trying yeah. to perfect the music. George Martin, whilst he added some fantastic instruments to the compositions, um, and it was pretty damn hot pretty you know um tight um was it perfect i, I there was a beauty of music at the time being imperfect yeah it real nobody's perfect and yeah. you yeah. can't relate it to it lem um, i'd like to thank you so much for um joining us yeah, today I'm um, so sorry that the sound is so bad. yeah we'll 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 get to the bottom of it. We'll get you on again, and 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 maybe um, you know have a have a an, yeah. another relive of this. But um, I'd like to thank you for for coming on board, and hopefully we can meet up in in the near future. Maybe at a waffle club with yeah. that Stevie boy. Uh, <laughs> Steve Whitenell is was the guy that introduced myself and Lem. We we met over a lunch table down in. Uh, uh, what was it, um, Shaftesbury Avenue, whatever it's called, that was last year. So, uh, no, it's good, good to catch up with you then. Great to be in touch with you now, and thanks again for being our guest today. No, thank uh, you. you take care out there, Lem. And uh, oh, Sunday, we're doing a Rolling Stones Birth of the Rolling Stones tour. Hopefully, you, you, you're free to join us. Yeah. Um, like three o'clock um, London time on Sunday. Uh, it's about an hour, but usually goes on for a little bit longer. We take you through the places where the Rolling Stones started, basically their their seminal home, their their spiritual home um, in Richmond upon Thames. We, we we go from the church hall that they started in 1962 with the lineup with Bill Wyman and Charlie Watt. So I look forward to seeing you. On that tour on at three o'clock on Sunday, and hopefully uh, meet up face to face with some of yeah. our, our guests. Okay, thank you. I just like to apologise for the technical balls up. Such a shame. We'll we'll get there. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Lem. Take care, <laughs> and we'll see you Sunday. Yep.
Cheers. <laughs> so there we go, ladies and gents. Thanks again um, for, and I apologize for the, uh, for the sound quality. Um, I just want to let you know who we've got on next week on the Celebrity Spotlight. Uh, Mr. Derek Griffiths, um, known to his mates as Del, Del Boy. Uh, Derek Griffiths, one of the founder members of the Artwoods, which was Ronnie Wood's elder brother. Um, he unfortunately passed away some years ago, but uh, held in high esteem. Um, uh, Art Wood was um, instrumental in starting up the Ealing Club, for example, uh, with Cyril Davis and uh, Alexis Corner. Uh, it is truly the, um, uh, the home of the British blues, from the Ealing Club down to Eel Pie Island. As I mentioned uh, earlier on with Lem, we're doing the tour on, on Sunday, three o'clock on Sunday. Hopefully you can join us. Lem will be with us and hopefully the sound quality will be a hell of a lot better. Um, but it's the birth of the Rolling Stones. We mention uh, the Ealing Club there because it's fair to say that if um, the Rolling Stones were born in Richmond upon Thames, they were conceived at the Ealing Club. So hopefully you can join us on there. You can find out more about that and uh, tickets are available on that link below. Um, so if you'd like to join us there, just log on to that website. Um, and thank you again for sparing the time with myself. My name is Paul Endicott from Music Heritage London and the Swinging 60s Experience in London. It is now just gone eight o'clock, 11 minutes past eight, live in London. You take care of yourselves out there and hopefully speak next week with Derek Griffiths. Del boy to you, he likes to be called Del. Take care out there, stay safe and be careful. Cheers then. Bye.